Hi there, my name is Etra with Mind Studios, and this is part 8 of our tutorial series all about making your own game in Universal Fighting Engine. If you haven't seen the overview video in the top right, I highly recommend you watch that to learn about how to follow along with this series. Today we're going to make our own customized story mode, training mode, and challenge mode for our demo game. To start with, let's take a look at how story mode works in the default Universal Fighting Engine project. First, we select our fighter, then we are greeted to an opening screen, a conversation before battle screen, and a set of three random battles. After each battle, we get a conversation after battle screen. After the first three fights, we move on to Robot Kyle as the final boss. When we beat him, we get a final story mode ending screen. To look at and edit this structure, we can go to the heart and soul of our project, the global settings, and then scroll on down to Story Mode Options. We can see that we have our opening scene and our ending scene screen for our story right here, and we have two groups of fights. First is a set of random fights, and then we have a specific boss fight against Robot Kyle. If we open these up, we can see that each of our opponents here, we get to select the opponent, the stage, the before battle screen, and the after battle screen, and then the fight mode here allows us to fight against this group in a random order or in a defined order. And right here, we can also set a limit of how many we fight out of this group before progressing to the next phase. If we look near the top, we can see a bit more options. We can disable mirror matches. And then my favorite option here is if we uncheck using the same story for all characters, we can actually make a custom story for each and every separate character. Above that, we can set what characters are selectable in the story mode or selectable in the versus mode. This system allows us to unlock characters when various events happen. These events don't have to be tied directly to the story mode, but the character unlocking system is stored here. So with all that information, I'm going to make my own custom story mode for our demo game. For each of my screens, I'm going to duplicate the default story mode screens and customize them using the same basic methods from the GUI video. Also, while I'm here, I can change a few settings for the story mode texture screen, I can set what audio plays when the screen pops up, and I can set if the screen is skippable or not, and how long it takes to move on to the next screen. You can do a lot of customization here, like making a full dialogue system if you want, but for now, these screens are just images that are in between battles. I can also go down to GUI options to edit some more story mode screens here, specifically the continue screen, game over screen, and congratulations screen are all stored under GUI settings instead of story mode. Now that I made my screens, I'm going to create my fight groups. I'll create a first group of opening fights against either Shrigma or Jeff in a random order. Then I'll have my new character, Buff Buddy, be the final boss fight. For this, I'm going to go to the Buff Buddy character and add a boss version of that character. To do that, I'm going to go find my Buff Buddy asset here, specifically the character file. I'm going to create a copy of it. Now I'm going to scroll down and give him the boss battle behavior we made in part 6 of this tutorial series. I'll take this boss version of our character and add him to our character list here. However, I don't actually want to play as the buff buddy boss character. So to take him off of our story mode and versus mode screens, we can go down to story mode options, and then right here, uncheck buff body boss and then right here, uncheck Buff Buddy Boss again. But while here, I actually think I want to make this new character, Buff Buddy, an unlockable character at the end of story mode. So to do that, the first thing I need to do is to make him locked. So uncheck him from both the versus mode and the story mode here. Then to unlock Buff Buddy at the end of the story mode, all I need to do is add a bit of code to our ending screen. So I'm going to make a new script here. I'm going to call this character unlock. When the script is loaded and start, we have two functions we can call for this. UFE.unlock character in story mode and UFE.unlock character in versus mode. They both need a parameter that tells them what character to unlock. 
So I'll make a public UFE3D.CharacterInfo variable called character to unlock. Save the script, and then if we hop on over to the ending screen here, we'll have a brand new slot to drag Buff Buddy into. I'll just search for him, and then drag him in here. Now I can test my story game. As you can see, Buff Buddy is not unlocked. After finishing the game, I can check versus mode, and ta-da! Buff Buddy is now playable. Now that I have a cool new character, I want to train with them in training mode. So let's see how training mode works in the default UFE game. In the training mode, you can select your characters and your stage. Here we can see I get my button prompts on screen, and the enemy does an attack. If I reduce the enemy's health to zero, it will automatically refill. We can head over to my custom game, and I can adjust some of these settings if I want. I'll open it up, and the first option we want to look at is under Debug Options, and it's Input Display here. Right now, these check marks will tell us what game modes the input display shows up on. So I want to make sure Training Mode is checked here, so I have my inputs on the left side of the screen. Now I can scroll down to the Training Mode settings to change what I want to here. Right here, we can see whether or not we want to keep the timer going, what the starting life for the player 1 or player 2 is, and what the starting gauge is. You'll notice that the starting gauge for both is at 0, but in the training mode, it was always filled. That's because the player 1 and player 2 gauge were set to infinite here instead of refill. For my training mode, I'm actually going to set both of the life bars to infinite here, so they don't refill after three seconds of no use, all of the stuff will just be flat infinite. I can try this out, and as you can see, I can see my inputs, and my opponent has infinite health. This is a nice place for me to experiment with my new character, but what if I want to practice specific actions or combos? Well, that's what challenge mode will let us do. If we look at the default UFE game, we can see that the challenge mode leads us to a menu with 18 default challenges. These challenges range from performing basic actions like moving, to performing specific moves, or even combo chains as different characters. If we open up the global settings for the challenges, and scroll down here, we can actually see that each challenge has its own little sub-menu here, where you type out the name of the challenge, the description, what characters pop up in the challenge, and what happens at the end of a certain challenge. The main section of the challenge you'll want to edit is this action list here. These are the actions that have to be performed in order for the player to complete the challenge. The action type can be pressing a certain button, performing a certain move, or performing a certain action like moving or jumping. To demonstrate, let's make a few challenges ourselves. First, I'll actually edit the challenge mode menu for my Dev Brawl challenge selection screen so it selects from just the five challenges I will create. Once I have that set up, I'll drag it into the correct challenge mode slot under GUI options, and actually I'll notice since the update to UFE 2.5, I don't have any of the challenge mode GUIs selected, so I'm going to drag in the appropriate ones here. Secondly, I'll make sure there's a button on my main menu that actually leads to challenge mode. So to do that, I duplicated a button here, and then just go to default main menu screen, and have the button lead you to go to challenge mode screen. With that set up, we can actually make our challenges. To start, I'll have our player walk. For this, I'll have them perform two actions, walking backward, then forward. Next, I'll make a jump challenge. Then, I'll make a light punch test. For this, I actually need to find the correct special move file. Punch standing light. Once you find the move, you can drag it in here. Next, I'll do the same thing for fireball. For the last challenge, I'll have the player perform a combo of moves. Let's say jumping light punch, standing light punch, into standing heavy punch. For this challenge, I have to make sure to check is combo in order for this to be read as a combo of moves that needs to be done in order to pass to the next challenge. 
And since this is our last challenge, I'm going to say end. And then also for the description, I can write out to do each of these moves. Or if I have a chain of moves like this, I can actually type out percentage sign list percentage sign, and it will automatically list out all these moves in the description for me. Now we can test the challenges out, and everything works fine. Even the last combo challenge has all the moves listed. However, it is a bit awkward doing these challenges in the giant crab game stage. Right now, there is no stage selection prompt for challenge mode, so it automatically throws us into whatever stage was loaded last. This will work fine for some games, but for mine, I want all my challenges to be in the Battle Dome stage. To fix this, I'm going to head to the default challenge mode screen script, open it up, and say when the challenge selection screen starts, set the stage. To know that I'm setting it properly to the Battle Dome, I need to go to my global settings here and count out my stages starting from zero to find the number of the stage that I need to put in the slot. So, mushy scene is stage zero, and Crab Game is Stage 1, Battle Dome would be Stage 2 then, so I can hop on over to the script and say load up Stage 2 every time Challenge Mode is selected. Now, all my challenges will be properly loaded in the Battle Dome. With our single player modes all set up for our demo game, all that's left to do is set up multiplayer modes. More specifically, online multiplayer in the next video. I'll see you there. Bye.